Hey, I'm Aaron Diablo, and I'm going to show you my toolbox. It's a collection of scripts and macros that I've put to go together over the last couple of years, and it uh, it helps me in you know, my daily workflow. First off, there's Grant, which uh, you know makes the objects and their wireframes gray and black. Uh, just a handy little tool that I end up doing this to almost all the geometry that I make while I'm modeling or setting up uh, blocking on something. Helps uh, keep it a little less cluttered. And if you want to go back, uh, there's random wires, which just puts a random wireframe color on an object, but it keeps it straighter the same. Uh, that one's pretty handy if you have a, a large group of objects or like a wall that's going to be breaking so you can see the different chunks individually. Next, I have a couple uh, primitives that I've you know, sort of hacked in there. Uh, usually whenever I make cylinders, I end up quadding the top just to keep the topology clean instead of having a uh, you know, pole up there. And so this keeps it all quad so it smooths nicely. I also have an S-box, which is essentially a sphere with the topology of a cube. Um, this works really well for avoiding those nasty uh, poles up at the top of uh, spheres. And oftentimes I start modeling heads or, you know, anything organic out of something like this. It's a really clean starting point. Next I have some mesh globals which uh, override modifiers uh, globally in your scene. So if I have like a turbo smooth on this and if I have a bunch of objects with a bunch of turbo smooths in my scene eventually it's going to start to get pretty slow. But now with this uh, I can go, let's see, it starts off on manual and I can go to off in view and that uh, will make the object, uh, the turbo smooth node, off at view but on in render. So if I hit F9, you can see that it renders it uh, smoothly, and I can cycle through, you know, like off or on. And if I have a bunch of objects in my scene, it'll do this for all of them. So it's just a handy little workflow thing when you start having a really clustered scenes, and there's one for mesh smooth and shell subdivide. So it's a pretty handy to keep your scenes manageable later on in the game. Next I have some rigging tools. The first one is this IK stretch uh, script written by Tyson Maybell and uh, let me put it in here. It's a pretty handy one if you have an IK chain you know going across some bones. What you can do is select the the end icon here and if you run the stretchy IK then the, uh, the chain becomes a, a stretchy chain so you can see that it's you know, it's really nice to get those nice, like, cartoony characters. Uh, it's important to uh, uh, click the remove button if you ever want to delete this stuff. Otherwise, it'll leave uh, little objects in your scene. So then you're just back to a uh, just a regular IK chain. Uh, next, there's the stretch point, which is another little bone tool. Uh, use this one for uh, creating like little muscle things or uh, facial rig stuff. Uh, if you want to select the end bone of a two bone chain, click stretch point, and it makes them stretchy and squashy in between. So you can get a, some nice, like, simple rig, grub sort of stuff going on with that. It's one that I end up doing a lot. And there's another one here, a little quick rigger, that is a uh, piston maker. So you can take any two pieces of geometry, um, and what you can do is select both of them. And if you click the piston maker, it makes them each look at each other's pivot points, essentially becoming rigged up quickly instead of having to, to mess with it. Uh, next, we've got uh, controllers. Um, whenever I'm rigging something and I have a uh, you know, bones or objects and I want to wire to them, usually they'll end up with pretty you know dirty offset positions, as you can see here. I wouldn't want to have to add that into my controller. What I can do is hit zero, and what that does is it makes a position and rotation list and then dumps a new one in there. So my wiring controls are now going to go to a, a clean a clean location instead of a uh, instead of an offset one. I can also hit clear, uh, and it puts it right back to just a base one. This is nice if you ever have. You know, messed up controllers or just want to get something out of a rig really quickly. Alright, so next I've got um, some control objects for you here. Uh, let's say I have uh, a bone as part of my rig and I want to make a control object for it, so I'll select that bone 
and I'll hit control ring and what that does is it makes a an object here uh, that it, the bone is now parented to so I can move it around but if you go to gimbal here you can see that my rotations are really junky uh, not anything any animator would ever want to use so what I can do here is while having this uh, control ring selected um, you can see there's a gimbal node button and if I hit gimbal uh, it creates an object that that the control ring is parented to and as you can see I have nice clean rotations here um, for, uh, for your uh, animators so they won't be <laughs> angry with you um, next I have a mirror rig button so I'm just going to open up a, a file here um, this is a, a you know just like a, a leg that's got some pistons and some, some uh, springs and some some of that kind of stuff in there and look ats and all that stuff and if you select the whole thing you can hit the mirror rig button and that just uh, groups, centers, flips, and then checks for any objects that need to be flipped around now that they're reversed. So if you want to take your selection and then copy it, and then you can hit mirror rig, now you have your other side built and it's already all uh, all clean for you. There's no, uh, you're not going to have like flipped look at constraints or anything like that. Alright, so next I have just a couple last little ones and then I'll get on to the, uh, the little plugin scripts that I made. Um, let's say you have an object here and its pivot's at the bottom, so you can center its pivot or you can center that object to the origin. So this is handy if you're ever like making something you know, in the viewport and you just want it to be you know, lined up towards you know, the center where you'd be making you know, a nice clean rig or object or something like that. All right. So now I've got the, uh, the little plugin tools right here. Uh, these are separate scripts, so when I click uh, launch script, uh, the debris maker, it's going to pump up with this new, uh, this new user interface here, and I'll just run through this quickly here. Um, you can select what type of rubble you want, so I'll go with plates. Um, you can pick how many pieces of debris. Um, up to 20. Uh, debris irregularity, so this is 1, 2, or 3 and the detail level. Um, UVs, stack, uh, all of these things I'll go into more detail on this script's own page, uh, own video, but uh, I can make particle flow and as you see I'll create this and if I move ahead in time you can see that it's already generated a selection of debris objects and then put them in a particle flow for me. All right. Um, and then lastly here we've got the After Effects export script which if I have an object in my scene I can uh, copy its position uh, to my clipboard and if I pop over to notepad here you can see I've got After Effects keyframe data that I can just place. Um, this is handy for uh, getting things back and forth between After Effects. Um, instead of having to you know manually flip these and, and keep track of all of that and also uh, you can save it out as a text document so just save out a text file wherever you want to and even more interesting uh, if you have an animated object um, and an offset custom timeline what you can do is uh, save out an animated position so you select your object um, snap your timeline or your frames to your timeline or just manually adjust them and then export your thing and what it does is it dumps out a uh, text file with keyframe animated data here that you can just copy and paste right onto an object in After Effects and you're good to go. The little thing down here at the bottom is this palette tool um, which I use all the time if I'm building a shader and I have a color in there and uh, I want to save it, I can just drag it right over onto the other side, try a different color, oh I don't like that, I can just bring my rig back and have a nice uh, safety net if you will. And this also will stay intact between instances of Mac, so if I opened up that other scene again, I will still have all of my little palette colors down here. And then uh, lastly there's just a little help, uh, you can click here and it will bring you to the web help. So I uh, hope, uh, hope these tools end up being useful for you, and if you have any questions or you want to send some feedback, you can just click this, go to my website, and 
send me a, send me an email.